In January 2020, news from China hit the world of an epidemic centered on a marketplace in Wuhan. Despite valiant attempts at lockdown, the coronavirus, also called COVID-19, began to spread to Europe, to America and to the world. By the 23rd of April, over 185,000 people were dead and over 2.6 million people were infected. The epidemic had become a pandemic. Fear of death has paralyzed millions as courageous hospital staff workers round the clock are trying to save lives. With one nation after another in lockdown, business has largely ground to a halt and governments seek to deal with a global financial crisis that some will predict will be much worse than the Great Depression of the 1930s. The spectre of a global meltdown leading to mass riots and chaos haunts the minds of the historical analysts. And it's only just begun with the first small coronavirus wave hitting Africa and many poorer nations, leaving many trembling with the apprehension of the big wave that may soon come. Our hearts go out to you. If you are suffering with COVID-19 or have lost loved ones, so many of us are scared, not only about the virus and death, but also about the future and how we will survive financially. And yet in the middle of this crisis, there is hope. Our hearts have been cheered by stories of brave healthcare workers and millions of people who have risen to the crisis with amazing acts of kindness and sacrifice in our communities. Who can ever forget Captain Tom Moore's Zimmer frame walk to raise money for the NHS? He hoped to raise £1,000 to celebrate his 100th birthday, but at present he has raised over £26 million to help our hospitals. As experts seek to solve the problem caused by the coronavirus and find practical answers, more and more people are beginning to ask deeper questions. We are now starting to hear the question, where is God? in the coronavirus. The earliest Christian artwork in the world is that of a simple anchor in the catacombs of Rome. In a period of intense and horrific persecution by the Roman emperors, when the Christians lost everything, their homes, businesses and lives, they had a peace, love and joy which could not be taken away from them and which amazed their neighbours. It was all because of their hope in Christ Christ was their immovable rock in the storms of life and the anchor symbolised their hope in him. They had no fear of death and had a deep peace about the future because they knew God in this life and were confident about going to be with him later in heaven. This has been the testimony of millions of Christians ever since. Scientists tell us that the coronavirus began in a marketplace in Wuhan, China. Just one person was infected but the virus spread to those around the one person. Within months, the virus had spread to millions with 185,000 deaths. The fight is on for teams of scientists all over the world to come up with a vaccine and then produce it on a huge scale to inoculate everyone to save lives. Whichever team finds the cure will be celebrated as saviors of the world. Does the Bible have anything to say about this? Although the Bible says nothing specifically about the coronavirus, it does speak of a much deeper root that has caused a major crisis throughout history and which affects us all today. Let's look at what it says in the book of Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, for if by the one man's offence many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Therefore, as through one man's offence judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. The Bible teaches us that God created the first humans, Adam and Eve. They lived in a perfect, loving relationship with God and each other at the beginning. 
God created them with a free will to love him and each other, but they abused this. They disobeyed his command not to eat some forbidden fruit from what is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When they ate that fruit, shame and sin came into their lives for the first time. And the virus of sin spread to their descendants, so that all of us are infected with this today. Sin is that invisible part in us, as human beings, that causes us to go against God and to live as if we are the masters of our own destiny, as if we are the gods in charge. We know that we have all sinned because if we look at God's law called the Ten Commandments, it acts as a mirror to show us our consciences. For example, we have lied, lusted wrongly, stolen and put other things, including ourselves, in the place of God, which is called idol worship. With this act of rebellion came physical death, as sin affected our bodies and a separation from God became the human reality. It even had a knock-on effect for the earth and environment, with living things mutating and the whole natural world becoming out of sync. The Bible says, Therefore a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. Over many centuries, God revealed through his prophets that he would come into the world as a person called the Messiah or Christ. He would be born without being infected by sin like the rest of us because he would bring the spiritual and moral vaccine for the world. No human being could solve this. People have tried throughout thousands of years to try and solve this problem that is a real root of the human crisis. They have tried thousands of religions, philosophies, self-realization programs and good works, but nothing solves the issue of separation from God and nothing brings a cure for our sinful nature, which is destroying our world and would take us to an eternal hell. Even our greatest scientists and leaders are impotent. When people saw that Jesus Christ, who was both man and God, exposed their sin and hypocrisy, they wanted to shut him up. They cruelly abused him and crucified him on a cross. They thought that that would be the end of him. But after he was buried, he rose from the dead three days later proved himself alive to hundreds of people and then 40 days later returned to heaven where he rules as God and Saviour. With the coronavirus, one person became infected which has now spread to millions of people. The death rate of COVID-19 is a small percentage but with sin there is a 100% infection rate and a 100% death rate. No team of scientists have the cure or vaccine for sin, but Christ, who is God, does. He gave his pure, sin-free life as an exchange for our sinful lives. He took our punishment for our sin on himself so that we might be forgiven and receive his righteous life to make us right with God. When he poured out his blood on the cross for us, he was offering us the sin vaccine through his own life. Death could not hold him, so he rose again, breaking the curse of death. Now, because he is alive forever in heaven, he can send the Holy Spirit into our lives so that our relationship with God may be restored now and that we might receive eternal life in heaven. We are becoming so used to the two-metre social distancing rule during coronavirus, unless we receive the vaccine and are immune. But with God, there is an eternal social distancing because he is pure and holy, and so is heaven. He cannot and will not allow sin to enter heaven because it will contaminate it and spread like a virus. If you do not know Christ as your Saviour and Lord, there is a huge social distancing between you and God. The good news is that Christ himself bridged the social distancing gap, that huge chasm between us and God. By taking the punishment for our sin, he offers a spiritual vaccine. We have to receive this from him in order to start the process of healing from sin now and transferring us to heaven later. We cannot earn it. It is the gift of God paid for by Christ. We have to receive it by faith and with humility, turning away completely from self-rule or sin. Will you receive Christ's vaccine? He's the saviour of the world but he won't force it on you. 
We are so used to hand washing all the time during the coronavirus. But Pilate, the Roman governor who tried Jesus Christ, washed his hands, wanting nothing to do with him. Will you wash your hands of God's vaccine for sin and salvation? Or will you let Christ himself wash you inside spiritually, cleaning you of sin, transferring the life of God's spirit into you and see the fear of death broken? God is here, right in the midst of this crisis. He's for you because he loves you and he loves you with an extraordinary love. If you are genuinely seeking God and know you have to deal with your sin and trust in Christ, here is a prayer that you could say as long as it's from your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you are God and the only Saviour. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. You rule in heaven and I acknowledge my own sin before you. I have broken your laws and rebelled against you, going my own way. Please forgive me. Wash away my sin. I turn from a life of self-rule and surrender my life to you to go your way, not mine. Please come into my life and fill me with the Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you. Amen. If you have prayed this from your heart, we would love to connect with you to help you at the start of your Christian journey. Please contact us at info at Dot org dot uk.